City, David Allman here, and you're watching episode five of season two of The Building a Song Diary. This is the last episode for this particular season, and we're gonna mix our song, we're gonna embellish things, we're gonna bring it from a demo stage to a more produced stage. The very first step is to organize things. And it's important to take that step. It's not gonna do much sound-wise, maybe a tiny little bit when we clean up things, but it's gonna help your process a lot. And what I like to do is start with the drums on top, followed by the bass, and then the keyboards and the guitars. So once those instruments are organized, I'm gonna color code them. So all the drums, all the loops, all those rhythm elements, I'm gonna color code them. I usually use the color red, and I do that for the bass also because they kind of go together, in my opinion. And then the keyboards, I like to use blue, and the guitars are green. Once that's done, I'm gonna to listen to the full thing, a uh, quick pass through just to make sure that everything is lined up. And if I see any problems, I'll fix that. Maybe some alignment issues. I can go into the MIDI sections and move notes around a little bit. And as I'm doing that, I'm also gonna do a very quick balance, right and left and center. And uh, I'll also adjust some volume. So let's just give that a try. Instead of leaving my tracks as MIDI tracks, which yes, they will give me the option to tweak things, I'm actually gonna commit to them because I found that when I have the option to go back and tweak things with MIDI, I kind of procrastinate and nothing happened. So at this point, I wrote my song, I kind of arranged it, I'm pretty happy with what's going on. I'm actually gonna commit to that and that's gonna force me mentally to move on to finishing that song. We're now committed to whatever we wrote. So we're gonna to stick to that and we're gonna start mixing, making those tracks work together. For these next steps, I'm gonna use some plugins that I recently discovered. These plugins are from Audified.com, but you can use whatever you want. Audified is great though, because they sound really good without having to tweak much and without even having to know much about how to use these effects. The first thing I'm gonna do is to use a compressor on the master output. This is a master bus compression. It's going to kind of blend those tracks all together. And uh, there is a compressor here that I'm gonna use. It's modeled after a German compressor, a rare compressor. It's the U73B, which was used a lot during the 60s, all the way up to the 80s. It's really rare now, but it's, it's great. It works really well. It comes loaded with a bunch of different presets, and I'm gonna go with the mastering preset. The plugin comes with a high pass filter, but I'm not gonna use it because I wanna show you how to EQ things. The high pass filter is useful when you have a low rumble and you want to clean up things, but again, we're gonna disable that right now. And we're just gonna leave that as a simple compressor, compressor at the end of our chain. This is a very simple plugin to use. On the left side, we have the compression. In the middle, that's high pass mode and on the right side, that's a limiter. But straight out of the box, if we just use the mastering compression, this is how it sounds like. Here it is muted. The plugin comes with a high pass filter, but I'm not gonna use it because I wanna show you how to EQ things. The high pass filter is useful when you have a low rumble and you want to clean up things, but again, we're gonna disable that right now. As I was listening to this, I noticed that my bass is lacking definition. It doesn't have the punch and the tightness that I'm looking for in a bass tone. Audified has a, a cool bass plugin for that. It's a cab emulation and an amp emulation. So we have our, our MIDI bass track, which was converted to an audio track. The sound itself, when it's alone, sounds okay. But when everything else is being played, it kind of gets lost in the mix. So I'm gonna go on my bass track and I'm gonna add Audified JK Amplification Pro. There's a free demo too that you can check out. 
And this is the Galleon Kruger emulation. It's um, Galleon Kruger, if you're a bass player, you know who these guys are. And I'm basically going to add an amp to it. And I like to just start with factory presets and just kind of hear how they sound. I kind of like that tone. Let's AB without the GK amplification. And with it, let's add a compressor to that. So after our GK amplification effect, I'm gonna add a compressor. I'm gonna get another Audified compressor. This is their Involve compressor. Yeah, already it's it sounds more punchy. A little more attack. This is without. And with it. It's subtle, but I think that's gonna do the trick. So we came from something like this. To this. Next step is EQing, which is really important. That's really going to make drastic changes to your song. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to run my mix in mono. It's really important because you don't wanna be influenced by the, the spacing of your song. You want everything in mono right in the center. So I'm gonna start with my drums. I'm soloing my drums here, soloing my bass, and I'm gonna add an EQ on the bass. We'll leave the drums like they are for now and I'm gonna mix everything according to the drums. Obviously there's a lot of bass going on. And there's a little peak here going on at about uh, 70 kilohertz. I'm gonna tame that a little bit by adding a high pass filter. Just to tame that low end. If I disable that, a little rumble going on here. That EQ tames that a little bit. As far as the, the higher end, there's nothing going on, right? Not much going on. That means that I can just curve that high pass so that absolutely nothing is going through. I'm just keeping the, the essential part of my bass, which is right there. Anything above, I'm gonna disable. And I know that you might say, well, there's nothing going on, so what's the point of doing this? Well, there might be a little bit going on that we don't really hear, and that kind of adds up, and that adds to the ear fatigue and the noise and uh, the, the muddiness of your track. So I'm, just, I'm gonna keep it like that, and then I'll work on the pad. I'm gonna add that pad here. I'm actually going to solo the pad for a little bit, Add an EQ, analyze that. And I'm gonna start by adding a high pass filter, which means that it's gonna cut anything below a certain frequency. And I'm gonna move that until I hear that the, the sound changes. Once I hear that the sound changes, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Now if I AB with the EQ, without the EQ, it's not that much difference. And I'm cutting a lot of the low end, which tends to accumulate if you, do, if you don't do that. Next step, I'm gonna add a filter a very narrow filter here. And I'm gonna increase that, and I'm gonna move it around until I find, I call this a singing frequency, a good, a good frequency that kind of complements the tone and the chords and the harmony of the track. See that harmony? Uh, not that. 
That's not... Right there. I like that. So I'm going to keep a peek here. For AB. It's subtle, but still, it's going to make a difference. I'm going to cut the highs a little bit. Cleans it up. It's like this hiss when I didn't do that. I'm going to continue working on this a little bit, tweak things, make sure that everything is polished, go through all the different tracks with the EQ, and then I will upload the finished mixed track on my website, davidwallman.com. You'll be able to compare the three different versions that we had. The very first one with the cheesy sounds, the second intermediate one with better sounds, and the mixed sound. And that's basically what I do when I write a track. We can go a lot more in details, but that hopefully gives you a, a better overview of what's going on when you're writing a piece. That's my process. There's a lot of different ones out there to what works for you, but I really hope that you found some of these videos inspiring and um, that they gave you some ideas. Check out Audified.com if you want some easy plugins to get started. There's some demos, free demos that you can download and use. And next week, I will perform the full track. I'm gonna try to find some interesting guitar things to do on there and maybe a little bit of improv but that's basically it can't wait for next friday it'll be interesting to compare the very very first video and next friday's video thanks for watching this subscribe to my channel like this share it around i'll see you very soon until next time practice well and city